And again, we're going to be welcome Genesis as an alert origination software vendor. They're going to be providing the demonstration. But as a program, uh, we cannot endorse any specific vendor. So I'm required to uh, read this legal disclaimer. The IPOL's vendor demonstrations are intended to increase state and local emergency management agencies' awareness of vendor products and IPOL's capabilities. The webinar provides an overview of the interoperability of these systems with IPOL's open and will include vendor presentations of their products. FEMA's IPOL's office encourages and facilitates the discussion of products and tools, but it does not endorse any specific vendor's products. This webinar is for educational purposes only. And a question we get uh, quite a bit at the IPOL's office is, uh, well, who should we go with as our alert origination software vendor? And uh, the answer is that we cannot answer that. Uh, yet another reason for uh, hosting these, these webinars to provide some, uh, some education uh, or a place to start for alerting authorities uh, seeking out a new vendor or alert origination software tool. And as I mentioned today, we're going to be welcoming Genesis, and it's going to be presented by Paul Naiman. And uh, for any specific vendor questions, please reach out to Paul. His email address is, is listed here on the screen. If you're wondering, before we start the demonstrations, bar our cameras on and on, we've had some issues with lag, uh, so we just don't want to interrupt any, any portion of the demonstration by, uh, un by having our faces on the screen unnecessarily. Uh, so with that, I think we'll go ahead and, and get started. Uh, Paul, are you there? Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Justin. Just a quick comms check. Let me know if you can hear me well. I can, and I just passed you uh, the ability to share your screen. Got it. Got it. Wonderful. All right. Uh, let me just zoom everything out of the way here. The uh, WebEx controls and we'll get started. Uh, so to set the, the background, I have just a few slides to talk a little bit about who we are, uh, what do we do today, uh, the uh, verticals and the customers that we serve. And then, of course, the alliance portion of this is the hands-on demo of iPods, and then we'd be happy to answer any uh, questions um, at the end of it. So with that, let's get started. Um, so who we are, we are the critical communications company. Uh, we've been on the market for over 15 years now. Previously known as LRAT, the Long Range Acoustic Device Manufacturer. So we started in the hardware world developing speakers that can broadcast a voice and tone for miles around with extreme high clarity. Uh, so today we serve the, uh, like the Google searches, we are the, uh, uh, the, the dominant in the market of outdoor warning systems. And about two years ago, we expanded into the world of mass notification by providing EMNS systems, as you understand them today, the ability to deliver voice calls, uh, SMS messages, emails, broadcast to social media, and really engage any infrastructure available uh, with the customer. Uh, so to signify that, we rebranded as Genesis, and since then we've been aggressively expanding into the market of mass notification uh, by growing organically and acquiring companies that are really pushing the edge of innovation in the public safety and mass notification uh, in Canada, we acquired the Mika Mobile. That was last year. And just a few weeks ago, we closed the acquisition on Zone Heaven, which is a SaaS emergency evacuation and planning tool. So we're very excited about that. To talk a little bit about the customers that we serve, if you look at these um, verticals, we work very closely with the DOD. We are supplying every single branch of the US and uh, world military with our equipment. And the scale of the systems that we deploy range from nationwide. So we service the entire countries like Australia, Spain, a country of Japan, Puerto Rico. And then if you scale it down, we go into counties and municipalities. And their perfect examples would be county of Riverside, uh, Crawford County, uh, Presidio Trust signed up recently. Then you go down into the cities and we've got a variety of cities working with us from California cities that recognize um, the additional value add that we bring to the mass notification world, city of Laguna Beach, Newport Beach, um, city of Mill Valley, uh, Sweeney, Texas, and others. And then you go into enterprise world. And again, recently we've acquired some significant customers there from uh, Port of Houston to Salvation Army to a BMW North America, which is an entire BMW with every single office and branch in the United States and Canada. 
So what is it that the customers see in, in our application suite? Um, if you look at this chart, uh, and it's probably very similar to how other mass navigation systems position themselves. We are this black box in the middle for Genesis Emergency Management. This is our platform, our offering. And on the left side, you see we are capable of taking various external data, uh, sensors and warnings. So we work with wildfire cameras, with flood detection sensors, with various systems for early warning from, again, from evacuation planning or the residents sign up themselves and know their zone when they need to get up and go to various incident management tools. And on the right, you got the various ways to distribute these alerts. So starting from the top, we do have native integration with our audible speakers that are capable of running even without any local power or cellular connectivity. So essentially, we become the system that is capable of operating even when your entire infrastructure is impacted either in a major hurricane or earthquake or a wildfire, when all the traditional means have been rendered useless because the cell towers are gone or, or they're not functioning. Our uh, equipment is capable of broadcasting the message to the community, to the public. And this is what the SLED emergency managers see in our solution. This is why it has been highlighted in recent California fires, in Australian wildfires, really in every major disaster. This is usually the means that are still active and able to deliver messages when everything else fails. But of course, on top of that, you got the regular traditional means of delivering SMS notifications, phone calls to a mobile app push, cross post to social media, output to other cap enabled systems from digital signs uh, to, to maybe uh, freeway signs and so on, delivery of email, delivery of desktop alerts, and of course, integration with iPods, which is why we are here today. And then finally, what we got here running at the bottom is our unique capability to integrate directly with the carrier hardware. So we're capable of delivering SMS with location-based geofences and do cell broadcast. We're able to tap in and essentially understand every single device that is functioning on the carrier network, whether you're a tourist landing in the country or you purchased a new phone and got activated. We can now see the capabilities of the phone, where you are, and broadcast to even without an opt-in, which is a fantastic ability for a mass notification system. So with that, let me pause here. I don't wanna run any more slides. This is really a, a brief intro about who Genesis is, what we do, and then let's focus on iPods. So with that, let me, uh, let me switch to the actual software suite and talk a little bit about- um, Paul, let me, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump in here uh, really quickly. and. And just share with the audience. So what we're looking for um, in these demos, and, and Paul is aware of this, is uh, an alert that's going to be sent to the iPods lab, and Kiera is at the iPods lab to confirm that the alert is received. So we're not sending a live alert; it's just a test, um, but it's it's mimic mimicking the live environment. And that TV there will display the alert, and we're going to hear it come across um, as you would on a TV or radio. Um, through the EAS devices that are at the iPods lab. So I uh, just wanted to share that with the audience before you get going, Paul, but. Um, awesome, yeah, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you, mm -hmm. Justin. Justin. All right, so uh, let me walk you briefly through the elements of the interface that you see here. So we're very much map-centric. We firmly believe that every single critical communication needs uh, situational awareness. So with that, you can see the map is on the right side of the screen. We're natively integrated with Esri and ArcGIS. We do support other forms, open layers, Google Maps, Bing Maps, and so on, live traffic. But for now, let me focus on Esri, because that seems to be the staple for SLED customers, at least in the United States. Uh, so what do we see on the screen? Uh, we see my map is pre-centered on Bay Area. This is where I am normally located. You can see some customers are clustered around San Jose. I've populated some demo accounts on my system. You got the company bounce. And of course, we've got live, um, live layers as well. So let's enable weather radar and maybe hotspots as seen by satellite. And as we zoom out, you know, California Bay Area probably has got perfect weather. But if we zoom out a little bit, I'm sure there's going to be some precipitation moving around. Yep. And you can see that that's on the map. So when you do your emergency alerts, you can take everything that your map shows you from the population location to life conditions to run your alerts precisely as you need them to be and extremely granular uh, if you need to do zoom in down to individual blocks or districts of the city. 
So with that, let's enable also some FIPS codes and maybe take a look at additional layers that the customers brought in. Here's, for example, a, um, a, a utility customer with all of their pipelines. Uh, and if uh, you need to notify a particular neighborhood, you can easily do so. So all the information is at your fingertips, including the uh, FIPS codes, which we're gonna leverage in just a few minutes. And on the left side, on the left side, uh, we've got what we call quick launch templates. Uh, this could be color coded based on the type of the alert and restricted to specific operators. They could be very simple. Here's a simple demo alert. Uh, you can see here's the text that will go out, the title, the short message, the long message, and then the channels that we're gonna leverage, email, Facebook, SMS, Twitter, phone call, and a geofence that I have established. Now, this could be a little bit more complex. Here's an example of a parameterized launch. Uh, hello, today is day of the week. We can select a particular value from day of the week. Today is actually Friday, happy Friday. Uh, operations continues normal in a particular building, let's say railroad depot, and then maybe some free text. So you can see the possibilities there are, you could substitute this with an IPOS alert uh, if you got your uh, IPOS zone already set up and your typical message that goes out is normally the same with maybe specific uh, details, such as if you're running Amber Alert, maybe you wanna paste in the license plate of a car and so on. Uh, but you could configure this to go out with just a couple of clicks. So even an operator that is fairly new to the system could run an alert without any issues. But let's say we don't have a template that is good to go. So let's go ahead and switch to the library view. And here you can see I have a full library of various templates that are on my system. I can sort and search for them. Maybe they're assigned to a specific incident, like a hazmat incident. They could be grouped by various types about what they are, the nature of the alert, or I could just create an alert on the fly, which is exactly what I'm gonna do now. So let's go ahead and do a new iPod alert. So we'll say FEMA demo today is 062521. This is a one-time alert. And really this is the only information that I have to fill out here. Now that the alert is created, Let's go ahead and select the channels that we're going to activate. You can see on my sandbox, I got the various integrations already set from speakers to SMS to push notification, email, phone, built in web page, social media with Facebook and Twitter, RSS feed. We're predominantly interested in iPods, so I'm going to select just that. So with iPods, I got the panel for configuring the message. So let's go ahead and select that. So headline. This is just a typical, typical headline. And you can see there are character counts showing up as I type this in. This is just a sample description. And now the instruction field, this is just a sample instruction. Now, uh, let's decide what are we gonna activate? So let's switch to the iPods config dashboard right here. And you can see that we have already so you pulled up your certificate and we verified the connectivity with the uh, FEMA uh, infrastructure. Now the lab connectivity is perfectly fine. And if we switch to live environment, we color everything red to signify that now you're publishing to the, uh, to the actual live, uh, live system. So let's switch back to the lab and we're gonna select both WIA and we're gonna select the EAS as well. Now, as I've selected WIA, I've got additional fields to, uh, to add, and this would be a WIA messages that will go out to the uh, smartphones. Now let's type in something. This is just a short uh, WIA message. And really this is the only field that I have to fill out, but you can see we are fully WIA 2.0 compliant, so we can support both short and long messages. Longer message for the longer field, how about that? 360 characters are supported here. And of course, Spanish as well. So let's do something, uh, alert the, the plant uh, nuclear, which is gonna be an alert around the nuclear plant. The reason is that my certificate allows me to publish around Indian head nuclear facility. So we're gonna do just that. And might as well just fill out the longer field as well. Alert the uh, plant uh, nuclear here. Now you don't have to worry about which message goes to which phone because the handsets decide for themselves based on their capabilities. If it's an older handset, they'll display a shorter message. If it's a modern handset, they'll be able to display a longer message. And then if the locale is set to Spanish, they'll, uh, they'll display short and longer Spanish message correspondingly. 
Now, because we're doing EAS, we can select a sound to transmit as well. This will go out on, on cable channels and other means of information on TV. So let's go ahead and do a nuclear alert. Uh, and now we just have to fill out the, um, the various fields on the alert that we're publishing here. Um, again, all of this could be set as a template, but we're publishing alert from scratch. So this is what goes into a typical alert. So let's go ahead and select what you type. Now, again, we've looked at your certificate and we've limited you only to the things that you're allowed to publish. So you don't accidentally select something that on um, where you overstep your authority and that gets reject rejected by FEMA. Uh, so everything is listed here as per your certificate. So event code, local area emergency. Let's go ahead and fill out who's publishing this. It's myself. Category, let's do safety. And then here, just uh, quickly select the rest of the values. And at this point, we're almost ready to publish, except we need to fill out where are we publishing this. Now, because we're way at 2.03.0 compliant, if you know your FIPS code, if your county only has one FIPS code and you want to publish FIPS code wide, you could just type it in, or we could do a geocount. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move to Indian Head, uh, Maryland, right here. And this is a fairly tricky uh setting you can see there's a number of FIPS codes that are coming together and then what do we do uh let's go ahead and do a polygon around here something like that absolutely random and when we're done we're going to save it now the system will detect that we're publishing to something where we're not allowed to publish again so we don't overstep our authority uh so the warning the toast warning you may have seen said you actually selected a FIPS code where your certificate is not valid so we've only limited the Charles County 024017. And at this point, the iPods channel has turned blue. That means it's ready to go. And we filled out everything that we needed to for the alert to go out. So, and not only the, uh, once the channel is blue, and if we had other channels, if they were turned blue, which means they're ready state, uh, we can actually publish the alert. So let's go ahead and run it. Now we can enable additional settings here. For example, retype your password if you're publishing on a live system. This is customer specific on my sandbox. And because this is lab, no further action is needed. So let's go ahead and publish. Now the iPulse channel is running. You can see it turned yellow momentarily, and now it's done. So it's green, which means the message went through without any issues. If we had a red flag here, we'd go into the reports and take a look why. But there's a couple of ways to confirm that everything worked out nicely. So for example, uh, we can take a look at the official uh, event viewer on FEMA site, uh, which is available for the lab. Uh, here's our latest alert. Right, uh, let's take a look at that. And you can see that we a message went through, EAS went through, uh, all hazard feed went through, and we didn't leverage no weather radio. Now pause here for a second for Kiara to confirm. And yes, we are receiving the alert here in the lab, and you can see it scrolling across the television, and you can hear it on the EAS devices as well. All right, fantastic. Now let's go. Let's go back to the tool, and here's another way to confirm this. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and confirm. Here's another way to confirm this. We have a built-in IPOS monitor. Actually, monitors everything that's happening on the system nationwide. Uh, here are the latest alerts on the live feed. You can see here's a flood warning. You can see the polygons that are specified. And because we're looking at live weather, we can actually evaluate what is indeed going on there. With full details about how it was published, who published it. We can filter this out by category. Let's go ahead and take a look at safety alerts. Let's go ahead and do that. So here are all the latest safety alerts, child abduction emergency, not an actual message. Again, someone just kind of running test alerts. But again, you have full, uh, full uh, alert details available to you. And if we switch to lab mode, uh, lab feed, which is what we just published, let's take a look, include the sender as well. Uh, let's add a column for this sender, disable category filter, and search for myself. And here we go. This is our latest alert. So we can confirm that indeed it hit the uh, FEMA network and it was distributed accordingly. Great. Now let's go back to the alert for a second. And what if we need to cancel the iPods message that went out? Well, we got a built-in cancel alert as well. Let's do that. And now the cancellation command has been sent 
to FEMA, we can see that IPAUSE turned to gray, it has been stopped. And if we go back to IPAUSE viewer and refresh it, also auto refresh, you can see the cancellation command went through as well. All right, great. Now let's go back for a second to IPAUSE uh, lock here and, and uh, explore what else you could do with that. Well, one, you can review if there is an alert, uh, if there is sound attached to an alert, you can also play the message through. And I'm not sure if the, uh, if the sound that I just played was broadcast over WebEx as well, but yes, you can listen uh, to the sound messages if they were attached to the iPods alert going out. But more importantly, you can set up a watch on iPods. For example, here's my iPods watch for bad weather. You can configure to match across any field on iPods message going out or a combination of values on it. For example, let's say I'm not interested in MED, but rather safety and security. And um, I could enter a specific publisher as well. Let's say we'll call it uh, San Bernardino County EM, something like that. Now, you don't have to depend on cog to cog broadcast. If you are a county on a border with another state or maybe in a, in a region where you experience flash floods or tornadoes or anything else, and you want to know if a neighboring city, municipality, or county published something, you can set up rules to get alerted immediately. Uh, and when the uh, particular conditions match, maybe a polygon intersection matches, you can run a specific template that is configured on your system. So first, let's say that alert goes out to your staff, you review it, uh, you know as soon as it hit the wire on FEMA system. And then, of course, if it warrants, if the conditions warrant it, then you can rebroadcast it to the public, give them appraised of the situation. So uh, that is the short overview of IPOS capabilities on initiating the alert and uh, catching it and rebroadcasting if needed. Again, let me pause here and see if there are any questions from the FEMA team or, or from the public. Uh, great, thank you, Paul. That was a great demo. And I was actually gonna ask Kiara to share the message you were, but you've got it built in, so that we didn't have to do that. Um, Kiara, thanks for confirming that the alert was received uh, at the iPods lab, um, objective met, <laughs> so great. Uh, Paul, we do have uh, a, a few questions, and this is one that we, uh, we pretty much get every single time. Uh, it takes a certificate to uh, for an alerting authority to send an alert via iPaws. We send the, the certificate after they've signed an MOA with us um, and after they've got their permission set. Do you upload that certificate for the alerting authority? Do they do it themselves? Um, what's going on there? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we we do it for you. Uh, typically, we'll receive the certificate over some secure means of communication. Either the customer has their own uh, secure transfer or we provide a secure transfer. That is part of uh, what we do as a system implementation. So we load your lab and your live certificate and then um, test on lab that everything went through. And of course, there's also capability to send to test on, on the live system as well with uh, required weekly or required monthly test uh, that everything indeed is functioning. Okay, great. And, and I also wanna say, while you have the screen up, you did get that WIA, um, short English, long English, short Spanish, long Spanish, you, you got that right. So iPods requires um, at least um, the WIA short English for their 90 character message. Um, the other fields are optional. And, and Paul was correct in saying that you know, if phones are able to uh, carry the 360 or display the 360, that they will. If they're not, it'll default back to 90. And if your phone is set to Spanish, then you'll default to the 90 or 360, depending on which uh, what your phone's capable of doing. So uh, thanks for hitting that. We um, we do not, as I pause, translate. We don't do automated translation. Automated translation. Uh, we we say if you're going to do that. Um, that's certainly fine, um, and that, but just please confirm that the message is, uh, you know, was translated correctly before you hit send. Uh, but as far as Genesis goes, Paul, do you offer any type of automated translation or, or yes. over to Google or what, what's your yeah. what's uh, Absolutely. 
so we, we do offer automated translation. Let's say I add SMS and um, when you switch to any other conventional channel, you can add languages on, I've just duplicated the alert that we published. So let's say I need to run an update. Um, I could take my previous message exactly as is and then uh, add something on top of that. So let's say I want to distribute this over SMS as well. I can add other languages. You can see that I got Spanish and French enabled on my system. So if I do Spanish, I can launch auto translate and support essentially all the languages that are supported by Google Translate. So that's not an issue, but exactly as you said, Justin, because FEMA discourages automated translation on iPods, we leave iPods channel out of it. So this is where you would have to leverage your own um, knowledge of Spanish language, if you will. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I had a question that um, that just came up as as you were demoing it. So every, every, every field that you filled in um, for iPods, there was a little pop-up that said, you know, save, save, save. So it's saving every time you fill out a field. And, and if that's the case, where is it saving? So if I was to close out of that, where would I find the alert? Yeah, so essentially the system is saving it uh, with, the, with the cloud. So even if you experienced a disconnect or you had to log out of the system or you had to evacuate to the, um, you know, the operations center and continue on the go, let's say on the mobile, you can do everything and continue from where you left off because every single change is immediately propagated to our cloud and, and saved as a draft alert until it's ready to go out. All righty, a uh, question from the audience. Is there, um, so we're on like a, a web browser right now, I guess, and on a laptop or desktop. Is there a mobile app for Genesis or? Yes, so we do, we do okay. provide a mobile app both for iOS and Android and all the functionality that I've done here, including recording yourself on the fly. This is a very common use case. Let's say you need to broadcast something urgently uh, to the population. They know the, uh, the sheriff in the local county. Uh, the sheriff could uh, record themselves, attach that message going out and broadcast it over EAS and of course over WIA or uh, any other uh, iPod supported channels. Yeah, I guess the login credentials are the same uh, once you download the app. Yes, the login credentials there, are the same. And, and, yeah, and depending depending on the functionality, it could be either a face unlock or a uh, finger touch unlock, depending on what uh, phone model you've got. Okay, we're we're doing excellent on time. I want to get to uh, another question that we have. Um, so I mentioned their certificates earlier, you know, it takes a, a, a certificate that we send uh, iPods to alerting authorities to use iPods. Um, and, and, you know, you answered what, what they do with that once they get it. Um, what about agencies that, that might not have ever used iPods, um, you know, and they're, and they're not familiar with it? Do you offer training? Um, even as uh, far yes. as, you know, when do you think they should use iPods if you take it to the yeah. next level? Yeah, fantastic question. That's actually what we get asked a lot. Let's say uh, sometimes the uh, customers worry, you know, application process is complex. Uh, they've never used iPods. They're not sure how to apply for it, or they've used a uh, different vendor and they worry about the complexities of switching the provider. So we do all the work, right? It's essentially a turnkey system from, uh, from start to end where we apply for a certificate on your behalf, fill out the application, work with you. Then we train you in our system. Uh, but most importantly, we create a policy document for you on how and when to leverage iPods because, you know, technically, let's say you're trained and you understand um, how to use it, but what kind of messages do you send out? When do you send out? What warrants iPods? What warrants a, what is a lower level emergency where you simply go to email and SMS and phone only? Uh, so we create these documents um, based on other customers and how they've done things based on your state policies. Because again, you got to, you're supposed to follow the uh, state uh, procedures, but not every customer is aware of those. Uh, so that's the full package service that we provide. Okay, thank you. So I was trying to unmute there for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I'll stop the recording before I close out the webinar. So for one second here, I, I want to say thank you, Kier, and thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for.